And this is a British fire step, 18 inches high, 18 inches off the bottom of the trench. And the officer would come along and he would measure it with this man's bayonet, which is 18 inches. And they had to do them all to strict dimensions and strict uh, regulations. The Germans, on the other hand, have five lines of trenches behind us here. The first line here, in this point, runs through the middle of the cemetery on the top of the hill. It comes down the hill here and turns 90 degrees and then it runs down between this wood and the village on the top of the hill. The attack on the 1st of July and they'd never been up here before. Lots of them had never reached this far up before in, in, the, uh, in, in their duty uh, on, on up towards the front line. Lots of them didn't know what was out here at all but the Germans knew their way around. They knew the ground very very well. The same straps on it and you hook that little battle pack on. You take your cap off and you put on your steel helmet. This one's Royal Artillery. It's uh, a darker, it's darker, just keep it behind you. So you would put the steel helmet on and the cap is left behind. It, it is, it is. Here, I'll let you, I'll let you wear that one. It's... <clears throat> the steel helmet came out in early 1916 because of the number of head injuries. Most of those shells, well nearly all those shells you see around at the cafe, explode above your head. So head injuries, with a soft cap on, uh, head injuries were horrendous. They gave them all a steel helmet and the head injuries increased by 75%. You have a parapet. This man wouldn't last very long with his head above the parapet like that. The German snipers here were excellent. Excellent. There were Württembergers. They were brought up in the forest and they were expert shots from the age of probably six, seven year old. As soon as they could hold a rifle, they were carrying a rifle. But you didn't put your head above the parapet here. All the world has heard it, wonders why we sing, and some have learned the reason why. We are not forgetting it, we are not letting it. Fade away or gradually time. Fade away or gradually time. Oh, when we say that England's past her, remember. 
remember who has made her so. It's the soldiers of the king, me lad. Oh, king, me lad. Oh, king, me lad. In the fight for England's glory, lad. Of its worldwide glory, let us sing. And when we say we've all but won, and when they ask us how it's done, we'll proudly point to every one of England's soldiers of the king. Okay, we're now still in Newfoundland Park, Roman Hamill. Uh, Reserved uh, to remember the Newfoundlanders that went over here on the 1st of July 1916, on the first day of the Somme. But they weren't the first wave. The first wave was the 2nd Battalion, the South Wales Borderers. And in the trench that you see either side of me would have been the um, first two forward companies of the South Wales Borderers. The second two companies would have been back there. A 7.20 Hawthorne Ridge goes off which is the clump of woods, you see the statues. Yeah, yes. Remember, these guys have been told that all of that wire out there is going to be cut. Don't worry about the German uh, in the front line yeah. trenches. They're going to be totally destroyed and totally demoralised. OK, so the South Wales borderers get up and they start advancing. As they start advancing down here, the German machine guns open up. OK, how far do you think the South Wales border has got? About here. A few yards. <laughs> <laughs> up to the king there. Maybe. Up to the king? Maybe walked, some got down there, but a lot of them. Head. Okay. They didn't, they didn't charge, they walked. The South Wales borderers reached about where we stood now. Okay. Well, they've come from where those people are, basically. Come yeah. from where those people are, and they've reached here. And that's a battalion wiped out. How many is in a battalion again? A thousand. About a thousand. Yeah. Roughly a thousand. a thousand people gone in that oh, distance. Me. Okay. The second we're wave here... Hundred, we're talking about 50 or 60 yards, aren't we? The second wave here was the 1st Battalion, the Border Regiment. The 1st Battalion, the Border Regiment are following through. Okay. And they come through the South Wales Borderers. Stepping, and they over, reach, stepping over them. And they ring. Around about here. Okay. Was that another match at battalion gone? So that's two battalions gone. That's 2,000 chaps. That's 2,000 okay. from now, where those people are. There are conflicting um, reports being received back at the brigade, and the brigade believes there's some success here. So what they're now doing is they've now sent the Newfoundlanders over from St John's Road Trench where we were. Yeah. They've come over the top because they can't come through. Yeah. They come over the top there, and they come down through here. And all the time, there's these people, they see all these people on the floor here, and these people are here now on the ground firing like mad. And the Newfoundlanders push forward. And the Newfoundlanders actually do quite well. <laughs> are, are these, uh, okay. these here? Are these? They're later. They're later They're trenches. trenches they? They're later trenches. They, they, the, uh, barbed wire yeah, the, the pickets are still there. That's yeah. where they were. But the, the Newfoundlanders are doing very, very well. But by about the stage where we're at now, they're getting quite well thinned out. And the few ones that are left die for cover. And the only cover they can see is a tree that's just there. You can see the old tree. Yeah. That's yeah. actually a replacement. Somebody nicked the original for some reason. But that's the old, that's a replacement. Very similar to what it was. And their guys just darted in and got in cover down behind this tree, the few that were left. Yeah. So this is as far as the Newfoundlanders got. This tree is called the Danger Tree, and it's ah. named the Danger Tree for a very, very good reason. Just down the bottom here, just roughly down in the, in the gap down there, there's a German machine gun. Uh. And there was one tree that stood out on this lone battlefield. What do you think they used that tree for? Target practice. Ranging, Ranging and target practice. Where have these guys gone to cover? Right where they know the range and they know the, 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 the angle of the lighter sights. So these guys are actually in probably the most dangerous place on the battlefield, not yeah. the safest. But I'll still remember which way to go. I'm on the road, the road to home. Oh, the sound is 
Court German Military Cemetery. In this cemetery are 17,027 uh, German soldiers. For each cross you see at the end of the row there are two graves. For each cross in the middle of a row are four graves. At the far end of the cemetery you see two walled gardens. Those walled gardens are communal graves. So in total then there are 17,027 German soldiers buried in this cemetery. They were buried here at the end of the First World War when the French cleared the surrounding area so they could return the uh, ground or land back to farming. I have seen some beautiful flowers grow in my garden fair. I spent some wonderful hours lost in the fragrant rain. Wonderful to see, though it's sprayed with tears, it will live for years in my garden of memory. It's the one red rose, the soldier knows, it's the work of the master's hand in the world's great earth. Red Cross is a road of no man's land. of the day and the cool evening's benison, by the last sunset touch that lay upon the hills when day was done, by beauty lavishly outpoured and blessings carelessly received, by all the days that I have lived, make me a soldier Lord. By all of all men's hopes and fears and all the wonders poets sing, the laughter of unclouded years and every sad and lovely thing by the romantic ages stored with high endeavour that was his by all his mad catastrophes make me a man, O Lord I, that on my familiar hill 
saw with uncomprehending eyes a hundred of thy sunsets spill their fresh and sanguine sacrifice ere the sun swings his noonday sword must say goodbye to all of this by all the delights that I shall miss help me die O oh Lord He deals the cards as a meditation and those he plays never suspect doesn't play for the money he wins he doesn't play for respect he deals a cause to find the answer the sacred geometry of chance the hidden law of a probable outcome the numbers lead a dance Spades are the swords of a soldier. I know that the clubs are weapons of war. I know that diamonds mean money for this art, but that's not the shape of my heart.
I'm going to want some of these pictures. Because my batteries are flying. Oh, you don't have. Oh, you're photographing me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> I think. Mind your head on it me. wouldn't be realistic if you shut up, though, would it? <laughs> you're just sorry. <laughs> sorry you're going to be at the top of That was nasty. Just carry on straight up, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Just follow the way, follow the stairs all the way up. And Alex will be there to speak to you shortly. Right.